Hello and welcome to X Vlog episode number four. I am Mr. Boomstick XL, and I want to pose a question to you. Has Xbox Game Studios become unstoppable? Now, has the play has the platform that watched Sony's PlayStation 4 and the Nintendo Switch from the back of the classroom just set themselves up to win next generation? Well, to answer these questions, let me paint a picture for you that backs up my statement. Now, you know, when you talk about Xbox in 2021, the deck seems stacked. This year alone, Xbox Game Studios has quietly put together one of the best Xbox lineups in the history. I would even dare say the last 10 years, a decade, right? And they're just getting started. Now, if you didn't know, maybe you're finding the channel for the first time and you're not a big Xbox fan, and I say welcome, of course, First Party has doled out Microsoft Flight Sim, Psychonauts 2, Age of Empires 4, Forza Horizon 5, which just crossed 11 million players, and closing out the year, the face of the platform, the face of the brand, Halo Infinite. We're right now playing the multiplayer, which is incredibly fantastic. If you haven't, it's free to play. Please give it a shot. If you like free to play shooters, I think you're going to totally dig it. But here's the thing. Let me sweeten the pot a little bit. The indie scene, which gets overlooked a lot, has shined in a big way this year on Xbox. And they had in that in you know launched on the platform Death's Door, Song of Iron, 12 Minutes, The Ascent, The Gunk, which releases this week, The Medium that everyone forgot about, and one of my favorites, The Artful Escape, right? It has been a monster year for Xbox. And I haven't even really brought into the conversation Xbox Game Pass, right? We have these incredible day and date drops from second and third party developers. And let me just name two to get you excited. Back for Blood, right? Obviously, if you're a Left 4 Dead fan, it's the same team. This game is incredible. And which was releases, I believe it's this week or even early next week, Chorus. Chorus looks incredible. Day and date in Xbox Game Pass. But this is where I have to move this video along a bit. We're not here today talking about 2021. What we're here to talk about is 2022 and beyond. So let's talk about 2022, shall we? As of this episode of Xvlog, these are the first party titles that we know are releasing next year. Redfall, Deathloop, Forza Motorsport, and the granddaddy of them all, Starfield. All AAA releases, and by any stretch on any platform, would be considered a stellar year. One AAA bomb per quarter. If you're not, if you're not happy with that, man, I don't know what, what's going to make you happy. But let's add some second party, huge second party titles that are Xbox console exclusives. You have Crossfire X, Warhammer 40K, Scorn, and this is one I'm looking forward to the most, Stalker 2, which is going to be running Unreal Engine 5, and it looks glorious. And to top off that list, Shredders, if you're a fan of snowboarding, which I am. Though what's interesting, folks, is that the VGAs are still more than a week away, and we could see additional Xbox titles added for 2022 that will be revealed at the big show. So right now, we are we have these a few things that are confirmed for first party releasing in the next, I don't know, 18 to 24 months. And they're huge. You have Fable, Avowed, Outer Worlds 2, Perfect Dark, State of Decay 3, Hellblade, Project Mara, Wolfenstein 3, which I believe is close to releasing, could release next year. And I, and I have a good feeling on that. Indiana Jones, Gears of War 6, whatever that turns out to be. And from the coalition, a smaller, unannounced title that's going to be testing out Unreal Engine 5. 
right? They call it the Unreal Engine 5 project. I believe it's Gears related, but that's just a hunch. I have no connections that's telling me it's that, but we'll see. Here's what's interesting. We haven't even discussed what Rare is working out, working on. Outside of Sea of Thieves, outside of Everwild, we know they're working on one additional project. Tango Gameworks is, is a wild card here. In Exile has several projects in, in, in you know work they're working on. And Zenimax Online Studio is working on a potentially a new MMO, which sounds great. Though, if the above listed games are not enough to suggest that Microsoft has outmaneuvered PlayStation, forcing Jim Ryan to lock up these two-year deals that we all complain about, right? I think there's a reason for that. It's not because Jim Ryan's being a jerk. He's a businessman. But... The real reason, the main reason here, folks, is that Sony's games, as great as they are, and they are fantastic, folks, you know that I've talked about them on many shows. They're exactly why I own a PlayStation 5. They're the only thing I buy on a PlayStation 5, right? Third-person, story-driven, over-the-shoulder adult-themed games. I like that. They're single-player experiences, and I'm a selfish gamer. I, I like to sit back with the headphones on and just enjoy the story. Well, those games, as great as they are, as highly ranked as they are on meta, they take four to five years. And if that's the case, well, Sony might have painted themselves into a corner because next year, what we know is coming is Horizon. I can't wait. Gran Turismo, not a big fan, but I'll buy it because it's an exclusive. And they keep talking God of War. Folks, listen, God of War isn't... If, if God of War comes out, I'm going to be incredibly surprised, and I'll eat my words. But I don't think that's releasing until uh, early 2023 for a whole multitude of reasons that we're not going to cover today. But here is more ammo, if you will, to the conversation when you're talking about Xbox Game Studios and why I think they have overshadowed everyone in the industry. There are 14 unannounced projects, and I have them here for you, right? We know IO Interactive is working on Project Dragon. The same people that brought us the Banner Saga, which is uh, Stodic Studios, they're working on a side-scrolling game, hand-drawn, called Project Belfry, right? Mainframe Studios is working on something called Project Project Paxadai. In Exile, who I mentioned before, is working on something called Project Cobalt. Um, Oxide Games, Project Indus. Here's where it gets great. Project Kojima, right? We know that Kojima is working with Xbox on one game. I have heard that he has signed on for three, but we will see in time. Project Shalin. Now, if you're a fan of Wu-Tang Clan, really, who isn't? I mean, come on. Their potential, they, they have, we, it's been rumored that they're working with Microsoft to bring a side-scrolling beat-em-up with Wu-Tang Wu Clan. I mean, come on. Who doesn't want that in their life? Compulsion Games. Now, this is, a, this is an interesting one because Phil Spencer, in an interview last year, when he was asked what one game that we that that they haven't put out there for everyone to see is he most excited about and he picked this small studio they're working on project midnight obsidian which they're already working on a ton of stuff they have project penament now this is a fun one also uh if you're a fan of the xbox 360 days you remember one versus 100 well that is apparently coming back and that's being brought to us a, 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 based on the list in front of me Alt Space VR is working on the new project uh, One versus 100. Now, this is why I keep saying that the deck is stacked for Xbox. There are four additional projects. Now, I don't have the studios that, that are attached, but I have the project names. Project Kalimba, Project Gravity, Project Vungut, and Project Velvet. Now, look. I think I have presented a very good case, but I want to add a little more before I end today's video. As you know, we've heard different terms, you know, of acquisition. This is the season of acquisitions, right? Now, 
granted, the acquisition for Bethesda went down this year officially. I believe we're going to get something big next year. Question is, how big? The other question is, how many studios will be joining Xbox Game Studios in the next, I don't know, 18 to 24 months? Well, my opinion, guys, I think it's between three and seven. And here's, and I'm leaning more towards seven. And I'm going to tell you why. Remember last year, we heard a rumor. And again, this is all rumors, but it's fun. Fun to, you know, to, to listen to, fun to talk about. That Microsoft was gunning for 30 studios in XGS. That's where they wanted to stop. Well, they already have 23. If they can add the seven that I think they're going to add in the next, you know, 12, 18, 24 months, it's going to be that that rumor has, will, will have come to fruition. There is one little tidbit I want to leave you with. Now, this is a little tantalizing. I'm being a little teasing because I'm not going to give you much. I'm going to let the internet sleuths, the internet detectives try and figure this out. I have a very good friend, which will re remain nameless. Someone I trust, someone that I believe really does know his stuff. He's an industry dude, right? I, you know, he's a guy. I, 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 that's as much as I'll give you. Their next acquisition, based on what I've heard, is so big. It is so shocking that if you thought the Bethesda deal was huge, this is going to trump it. And my tidbit to you, and all I'm going to give, is that the next acquisition involves a shape. And that's it. Don't ask me in DMs. Don't ask me on the, uh, the, the comment section on YouTube. Don't do it because I'm not going to give it. I'm going to let you guys work with it. And, you know, maybe you'll come up with it. I'll, let, I'll chuckle if someone comes up with it. I don't think it's that hard of a clue. I think, I think it's quite easy. But that's because I know. Look, I just want to say that as an Xbox fan who has sat in many podcasts, both my own and others, when Xbox was on a downslope, um, it was hard because the media was against you, right? Against them. I say you, like I'm, I work for Xbox. I don't work for Xbox. The media was against the platform for a lot of reasons. Clicks and likes and subs to all of these, you know, media sites. And I, I understand the game. I'm not a boob, right? Like, but I don't use clickbait here. We, 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 I come here and I, I be honest with you and I have fun with you. And this is, this is how it's always going to be. Um, I'd rather just let the whole, the whole uh, podcast fail if I had to lie, cheat, and my way to the top. I won't do that. Sitting back and watching this transpire from both sides now. Like we saw Microsoft go from the Xbox 360 days where they were on top and completely bottom out in 2013. And it took a long time for them to get back. And not, it wasn't until Phil Spencer took over uh, where he was promoted to the right hand of the table of Satya Nadal in 2018. And now you see his vision. He's making all the calls, all the, pe all the right people in the right places. And it's Xbox. Everybody wants to work with Xbox now. Everybody wants to talk great about Xbox because there's a lot to, there's a lot to get excited about. But with that said, I do want to close out that the onslaught of first party titles that are coming are on pace to not just overshadow PlayStation and Nintendo. I think they're going to overshadow the entire industry. Again, that's my opinion. I think that we're going to see a lot more partnerships. I think you're going to see a lot of positive coverage. And I think that if you are someone that has was an Xbox fan maybe back in the 360 days and kind of went over to PlayStation 4 because at launch, they did have the better helpings. There's no doubt about it. Maybe not the better first-party games, but they did a lot of things right that got, the, got people to jump onto PlayStation 4. This is a great time to come back to Xbox. I mean, if, you, if, you're, a place, if, you're, invest, if you're invested in PlayStation, no one's asking you to give up your console. But Xbox is a great place for you to come and hang out. And if you don't want to spend the 500 bucks, Get out there and get a Series S, man. You could really do some great, you could really do some damage and do some fun gaming on that console. 
And you know what? You can play on both sides of the fence and it won't cost you a lot because Xbox Game Pass is still always going to be something that I talk about because it's a key in the conversation. It is the Trojan horse, if you will, uh, of why they're going to continue to grow. But I think I've talked enough. I'll close, I'll finish off today's, um, you know, uh, X vlog episode number four with this simple question. And once again, please leave a message in the comment section. I mean, listen, I try to answer everybody. Um, don't be mean. You know, I, I just delete you. I won't even, I won't even read it. Just, just, if you want to talk, DM me, leave a comment. I promise I'll get back to you. I leave you with this question. Has Xbox Game Studios, based on all of the evidence that I have presented today on the video, become the most dominant platform for first-party games in the industry? My answer is yes, but I'm interested to hear your answer. So once again, thank you so much. My name is Mr. Boomstick XL. This is Double Barrel Gaming. I certainly appreciate you taking the time to come and hang out and Hopefully, you enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, please, for the love of Joe, hit the like button. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. This is fun content that you get each and every week. I do three live shows, right? Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays. And every week from now on, you're going to get one of these X-Vlog videos um, it's become a, a passion project of mine. I really enjoy doing this. I love talking to the camera. I love talking to you guys about Xbox. And of course, I just want to say thank you for taking the time because listen, YouTube is a is packed with talent. It's a vast pool of talent. And if you're here, if you're subscribed, if you're newly subscribed, I honestly humbly appreciate that, folks. We are so close to 10K. All right, not this close. Maybe about this close. We're just over 800 subs away. Now, I know 800's a lot, but man, I can't wait to get to 10K. I think just pure by pure numbers, I'm going to get there eventually, but I'd love for you to help me. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And of course, this is Mr. Boomstick signing out of x Vlog episode number four. Take care, everyone. Enjoy gaming, and we'll see you in the next video.